Pixel 7a. Is this thing worth buying or is it too much money for what it is? We're gonna figure that out in this video. Google's A-series products have always been the ones to buy if you just wanted something that works well for not a lot of money. The Pixel Buds A-series are fantastic and I actually got a pair of them for free in the matching sea blue color from buying the 7A from Google's website. The A-series phones on the other hand have a very similar value proposition. Great cameras, decent performance, and solid build quality for a pretty cheap price. And thankfully, Google has carried that forward with the 7a but there are some big upgrades this year that have turned this phone into a serious contender in the mid-range category the first big upgrade is the display now I know what's running through your head right now those are some chonky bezels they're pretty thick around the top and sides and the bottom is even a hair thicker but really it's not a big deal the more important thing to note is that this 6.1 inch OLED display runs at 90 Hertz this year instead of 60 because of that it feels much more responsive when you're you know scrolling your social media or flicking through your app tray the display is also plenty bright for outdoor viewing it's going up to a peak of about a thousand nits which is surprising because it's not something you see on a lot of mid-range phones colors are great overall and of course movies and TV shows look great on it it's an OLED panel after all there is something that disappointed me the first time I started watching videos on this thing though. The speakers are just terrible. They are stereo, they come out of the top and the bottom of the phone so you get a left and right channel when you're holding the phone sideways, <sighs> but they just sound extremely tinny with little to no bass whatsoever and when you put it next to pretty much any other phone, the 7a speakers sound just bad in comparison. But if that's the biggest negative of the 7a, we're in pretty good shape, right? Let's continue. Google has graced the 7A with their latest and greatest Tensor G2 chip, the exact same high-end CPU that's in their Pixel 7 Pro. Coupled with eight gigs of RAM, performance is fantastic. I've had no slowdowns whatsoever with this phone and gaming on it works great too, given the 90 Hertz display. Plastic is not great for thermals though, which is exactly what we have on this 7A. So you're likely to see some performance dips compared to the 7 Pro with its glass back as Dave2D showed in his video, but that is A-OK -okay in my opinion given the price of this phone. See what I did there? A-series, A-okay. <clears throat> Moving on. I really do like what they've done with the A-series phones design-wise. I remember loving my Pixel 4a, but it absolutely did feel like a budget phone in the hand. The 7a doesn't at all. Google has come extremely close to perfection with making this glass back look and feel like glass. In fact, if nobody told me it was plastic, probably just think it was glass. It does lose the unibody look of the more expensive Pixel 7 Pro as there is a tiny gap running around the perimeter of the back of this phone, but Google says that this is IP67 rated, so that gap is reinforced with a rubber grommet on the inside to prevent any water or dust ingress, just in case you dunk your phone by accident. Now let's talk about these cameras. That's what everybody wants to talk about with these pixels. Google has opted to throw a 64 megapixel main sensor at us this year instead of last year's 12, as well as a new 13 megapixel ultra wide and a new 13 megapixel selfie camera. The result is a noticeable improvement in image quality across the board. In fact, the 7A might even come close to the performance of the 7 Pro, which has some of the best cameras of any phone on the market. It's not perfect. There's no telephoto lens, so you'll have to resort to digital cropping if you want to zoom in. And the ultra wide lens doesn't have autofocus either, so macro shots are kind of difficult to get. But besides that, the 7A does an absolutely phenomenal job for a phone in this price range. I don't think it's a hot take to say that these cameras are the best that you're gonna find in the mid-range smartphone segment. That's a conclusion that I've come to before with previous Pixel A-series devices, and the 7A holds true to that for yet another year. But will the battery last through all of that smartphone photography? Yeah, probably. I mean, the 7A has roughly a 4,400 milliamp hour battery, and once you combine that with the Tensor G2 chip that is very power efficient when it needs to be, you will get a solid amount of usage out of this phone before it kicks the bucket. I mean, that's been my experience with it anyway. In fact, the only thing I didn't like about the whole battery juice situation is how slow it charges. The 7A is only able to charge up to 18 watts when wired in with a charger that, by the way, is not included in the box. And on a wireless charger, it can only do seven and a half watts. If you're the kind of person that plugs their phone in every night, which by the way, is really bad for your battery health and you probably shouldn't do that anyway, then yeah, you, you won't notice. But I like to plug my phone in while I shower and get ready in the morning and 
A half an hour on the charger is not enough to get the phone to 80 to 90% for a full day of use, unfortunately. It actually takes like a full two hours to charge the 7A from dead to full with a wired charger, which is borderline unacceptable in my opinion. But slow charging speed and terrible speakers and slightly chunky bezels aside, I find myself unable to complain about the Pixel 7a very much at all. This is a truly great mid-range phone. And if you've got 450 US dollars to spend on a phone, this is a fantastic option. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great day.